If you already know that you want to update your motherboard BIOS and just want to see how to do it, I'll put an annotation on screen right now to tell you which part of the video to skip ahead to. For those of you that are interested in learning why you might want to update your motherboard's BIOS slash UEFI uh, as well as how it's done, uh, stick around because that's what I'm going to talk about first. First of all, what is the motherboard's BIOS? To keep things simple, it's the firmware or instructions for your motherboard on how to load basic computer hardware. It determines which device your computer boots from, your CPU's clock speed, your RAM speed, uh, how much voltage is being uh, fed to different components, and you know, just to name a few of the things it does. BIOS is actually an acronym that stands for Basic Input Output System. The term BIOS has been around for as long as I've been into computers and is still the term most commonly used for a motherboard's firmware. However, most motherboards actually use what is called a UEFI, which stands for Unified Extensible Firmware Interface. Uh, in my mind, the biggest difference between the old BIOSes of the past and the modern UEFI is you can use your mouse in a UEFI, whereas the old BIOSes, you could only use a keyboard to navigate the different settings and options. Since your motherboard comes with a BIOS uh, UEFI already installed on it, you may be wondering why would you want to update it? Or what are the advantages for updating your motherboard's BIOS? A great example why you might want to update your BIOS uh, can be seen with AMD's current AM4 motherboards for their Ryzen CPUs. Uh, when they first launched Ryzen in 2017, AMD promised they would support that platform, uh, their AM4 CPU socket, through the year 2020, meaning all the processors they planned to launch between 2017 and 2020 would work on the same motherboards. For example, you could have bought a Ryzen 5 1600 based system back in 2017 and now upgrade to a Ryzen 7 3800X CPU without even having to swap out your motherboard, which is actually really stinking cool. The only catch with this is since the new CPUs like the 3800X didn't exist back in 2017, uh, the firmware on the old motherboards does not recognize the new CPUs. Uh, to fix this problem though, all you need to do is download and update your BIOS to a new version which does support those newer CPUs. Uh, this same type of thing is true with other components like uh, graphics cards and even RAM. Uh, the older versions of your motherboard's BIOS may not recognize those newer pieces of hardware, so to get it to recognize your new stuff and work properly, a BIOS update is all you need. I've had a lot of questions from people when upgrading their graphics cards that will install their new card and they boot up and they see their motherboard splash screen and then nothing. Understandably, they were worried that their new graphics card was defective or that they had broken something while installing it. However, once they updated their BIOS, much to their relief, everything worked perfectly. Before I go into how to update your BIOS, I feel it is very important for me to mention that if your computer is working fine, there's no reason to update. It is only recommended to update your BIOS if you're installing new hardware and it's not being recognized or just isn't working properly. Because when updating your BIOS, there is a risk of bricking your motherboard. If you install the wrong BIOS, meaning one that isn't meant for your motherboard, or if your power goes out in the middle of the update, you could instantly turn your motherboard into a very expensive paperweight. That being said, as long as you're careful and do things correctly, you should be just fine. But it is very important you understand there is risk involved with updating your motherboard BIOS. Preferably, you want to be plugged into a UPS or uninterruptible power supply. That way, if your power goes out mid-update, your computer can continue to run and finish the update. I could be wrong about this, but I feel most people out there do not own a UPS. So if you can't use a UPS, then I recommend only updating your BIOS at a time when it is safe to do so. Updating in the middle of a lightning storm is a really bad idea. 
Okay, one last disclaimer here before we dive in is by continuing with this guide, you are acknowledging the risks involved and are proceeding at your own risk. If you brick your motherboard, it ain't my fault. Okay, first thing we need to do is identify our motherboard manufacturer and model. This is usually written on the motherboard somewhere. You'll need to either remove your computer's side panel, or if your PC has a window on it, you can just look through the window and you should be able to read the manufacturer and model name there. My motherboard is an Asus Strix X470F Gaming. So I'm going to go into Google and type Asus Strix X470F Gaming. I then want to go to Asus's product page. Now, each manufacturer is going to do things a little bit differently, uh, but this should give you an idea of what to look for. You want to go to your motherboard's support page. On Asus's site, I'm going to click on support right up here. To get the most current BIOS, you'll then need to find where you can download it from. On Asus's page, it's in the driver and tools tab here. I'm then going to click on the BIOS and firmware tab. And here I have the most current version of my motherboard's BIOS. If I click on see all downloads here, uh, then I can also choose to download and install older versions of my BIOS as well, if I needed to. Uh, depending on how old the BIOS is on your motherboard, you may have to update to an older version first before you can update to the newest one. If you need to do that, usually it will say what other version you need to update to first in the description here. Uh, once we know which version of our BIOS we want to download and install, we can click on download, go to our download folder and extract the file. You'll then want to copy this new BIOS file onto a flash drive. I always just keep it in the main directory folder when you first open your flash drive in Windows Explorer as it makes it really easy to find and install uh, once you're in your motherboard's BIOS update utility. I recommend plugging the flash drive with your new BIOS file into one of the USB ports that is connected directly to your motherboard, which are the ones on the back of your computer, rather than using a front panel port. The front panel ports are connected via a cable, so it gives me much better peace of mind knowing the port I'm using is directly connected to the motherboard. With that all done, it's time to restart our computer and boot into our BIOS. To get into my BIOS, I need to press the delete key on my keyboard here. So I'm just going to press it rapidly right now uh, until my BIOS screen pops up. I think this is pretty universal on most all motherboards, uh, but there is a chance your motherboard may require pressing a different key. So keep an eye out for what key you need to press to enter setup on your board. Once in the BIOS, you're going to need to find your motherboard's update utility. Every motherboard manufacturer's BIOS looks different, so your BIOS will most likely look very different than mine looks here. Uh, that being said, you should be able to find something along the lines of a BIOS update tool or BIOS flash tool or something like that. On my ASUS board, I just go over to tool here and the first option on the list is the ASUS Easy Flash Utility. I select that and now I'm presented with the option to update my BIOS via a storage device or via the internet. I'm an old school guy and have never used the internet option before, so I have no idea how that works exactly. And since we've already got our new BIOS file on a flash drive ready to go, I'm going to select via storage device and hit next. This screen is now showing us the available drives on our computer. I know my flash drive is a 16 gigabyte drive, so I'm going to select it over here on the left under the drive heading, and then move over to the right side of the screen under the folder heading and select my BIOS file here, which is ROG Strix X470F Gaming Asus 5406.cap. After selecting your BIOS file, you will probably be asked something similar to this. Do you want to read this file? You're going to want to select yes, which will either start your BIOS updating, or if all motherboard manufacturers do things the same way Asus does, then you'll be asked one last time, 
do you really want to update BIOS? I wanted to update mine, so I clicked yes one last time, which began my BIOS updating. Once the update begins, you want to make sure you do not interrupt this process. You want to keep your computer powered on and let the new BIOS version fully install. If you restart your computer or the power goes out during this process, you run a very high risk of bricking your motherboard, so proceed at your own risk. Only update your BIOS if you absolutely need to in order to get new hardware working with your system. If everything is working fine, there is no need to update your BIOS. I don't mean to scare you or, or anything like that. I just want it to be perfectly clear that there is risk involved with this process. The update process is going to take several minutes to do, uh, but once it's done, your computer will restart and you will most likely be prompted to enter setup, which will then bring you into your BIOS menu. Since you've just written a new BIOS version to your motherboard, all of your old BIOS settings will have been reset to the factory defaults. So you're going to want to re-enable the XMP profile for your RAM or DOCP as it's called on AMD systems, reapply any overclock to your CPU that you may have had in place, and go to your boot menu and make sure things are all set up to boot from the correct device. And then you'll of course want to change any other settings that you may have customized. Once you're finished messing with all of that stuff, you can go to exit, select save changes and reset and then your computer will reboot one last time and boot back into windows as normal with your bios now updated you should be able to install your new cpu graphics card ram or other hardware device which was not working before and get them working properly with your system and that my friends brings this tutorial to a close i hope you have enjoyed it and found it helpful. Uh, if so, please click the like button and share it with your friends who may be thinking about upgrading their CPU or graphics card and may possibly be in need of a BIOS update. According to YouTube, about half the people who watch my videos find them by searching for videos on whatever topic my video may be dealing with. Uh, I'm curious to hear from you how you found this video and why you're thinking of updating your motherboard BIOS. Uh, please leave a comment and share what brought you to this video. If you enjoy what I do here on my channel and would like to help me continue to make content like this, uh, please check out my Amazon store at the link in the video description where you can purchase the cool products that I feature in my videos. If you've stuck around all the way to this part of the video, I think a great big thank you is in order. I appreciate you taking the time to check out my video. I hope that you have a great day, and I also hope to see you in another video real soon. Well, all right, later.